Hey guys, Preacher 357 here, out here on the range with a gun you've seen on the channel before, and that is my Ruger GP100, and this is a Lipsy's exclusive model. It's got a five inch barrel. Uh, it's got the uh, brass bead front sight on it, and uh, it's also got the uh, ejector shroud here, but not the full lug on it like the standard uh, GP100s have. And so it's a little bit different, but it's still a GP100. It's got the walnut grips on here, which I like the look of them. That's why I leave them on here. Uh, I could I could have better grips than this, you know, if I was really shooting this a lot. Uh, something with a little bit of texture on it, uh, I think would be a little bit better because these are very smooth. But, you know, it's really not that big a deal. Uh, it's a big enough, heavy enough revolver that even 357 Magnum is really not that big a deal out of this gun. Uh, so the grips are fine, you know, uh, I don't feel the need that I have to change them out. I certainly don't have to have rubber on them, but uh, a little bit of checkering on here would have been nice. But I think they look good. Uh, I think they complement uh, this dark blue of the revolver. So I don't plan on changing them. I'm going to keep them on there. But I don't shoot this gun as often as I ought to. In fact, I probably haven't shot this gun in better part of a year, to be honest. Um... Maybe back, uh, I think the last time I had this gun out on the channel is when I did my review of the uh, Ruger Security 6, which I have right here as well. And this was uh, the Security 6 that was actually Hickok 45's gun that I picked up at the TFA auction in 2021. And uh, was glad to pick this up, been looking for one for a while. And so it was neat to, to be able to have one that uh, Hickok 45 had done a review on. And so... Uh, here it is, and one thing about this GP100 is it looks a lot like the Security 6. Now, there are some differences. This is beefier. You can see the frame here is a little bit bigger. It's got a little bit more beef to it than, than the uh, Security 6 does, and the barrel profile is heavy. You can see here, now these are unloaded, and I'm, this is just a camera. It's perfectly safe. But you can see that the uh, barrel on the GP100 is much thicker. You know, this is a bull barrel, basically, a heavy barrel. Whereas this is much more what you call like a pencil barrel. or well, It's a little bit more than that. Uh, a little bit more than what you'd see on the, those pencil barrel uh, Model 10 Smith & Wessons. But still not nearly as, as substantial as the GP100. So really what this was was a beefed up Security 6. They released these, I think, in 1986. And basically just did away with the Security 6. And replaced them with this heavier model, this beefier model. Uh, I kind of wish they still made this one myself. Something in between the the SP-101 and, and the GP-100, but you know, that's not what Ruger decided to do. But it's nice to have this gun here, which is so much like the uh, Security 6 as well. So here we have it, the Ruger GP-100. I did a lot of in-depth on this revolver back when I did my comparison between this and the Smith & Wesson 686 Plus I've got. I pulled them apart and kind of showed the differences and uh, really looked at how much more modern this revolver is than the Smith & Wesson design because the basic Smith & Wesson design goes back to the 1890s, you know, 1898, 1899 when the Model 10 was first designed. That's basically still the way Smith & Wesson makes their revolvers today. Whereas this basic style of revolver, you know, the Security 6 was what it originally came out in. Uh, and uh, that was 1972, I believe. Someone will probably correct me on that, but I believe 72 is when they came out. And so you're looking at, you know, 70 plus years difference between the design of the Smith & Wessons and the design of the Rugers. And so you have this much more modular system here with the uh, GP100s, which are, you know, there's pros and cons to everything, right? It, it's very simple to, to take apart, to strip down. Uh, it takes a little bit of effort, you know, it's uh, not as simple as, uh, you know, just taking it apart. Like with the Smith & Wesson, if you want to take the, the crane off, you want to take the yoke off, take the cylinder out to clean it, very simple. With the GP100, it's a little more involved to do that. However, when you want to get to the internals of this, it all just pops out the bottom. Whereas with the Smith & Wesson, you have to pull the side plate off, and there's a lot of little lock work in there to mess with. So pros and cons to everything. But I thought I'd get it out here and shoot it because I hadn't shot it in a while. Just do a little bit of video videoing with it, and because uh, I don't think I've ever done a video really where I shot it. I think maybe I 
put in a little bit of b-roll of me shooting it in that video of the comparison but i really haven't got it out here on the range and kind of ran it through the paces so i thought i'd do that today so without further ado why don't we uh do a little bit of shooting i've got some uh 125 grain i believe it is 38 special i just loaded up with a different profile bullet than i've ever used before so we'll see how well it does here and then i've got some 158 grain 30 uh 357 magnum that we'll shoot through it as well so let's go over here and do a little bit of shooting see if we can hit anything with it all right it seemed like it was hitting fairly well on maybe a little bit to the left that just may have been me though because it was more with the 357 than with the 38 the 38 seemed to be hitting on a little bit more let's see what we can do all right Oh, come on now. I don't know where I was going on those last ones. Shooting double action there. Let's go single action, see if I can dial her in a little bit better. Alright. There we go. Yeah. There we go. If you slow down and do your part, it'll definitely do it. Now that's one of the benefits to having a longer barrel like this with a five inch barrel. You get that longer sight radius. You know, a lot of times I'm shooting snubbies out here. And uh, as one commentator said, snubbies shoot fine. Well, they do shoot fine. Snubbies can be very accurate guns inherently, but when you're shooting with a, with a small sight radius, you know, any little bit of variation in, in uh, your sight picture changes your point of impact a lot more than it does with a longer sight radius. So it's much easier to be accurate when you have a longer barrel. And that's for anybody, it doesn't matter who you are. You know, no matter how great a shooter you are, you're always going to have an easier time shooting with a longer barrel. Now that doesn't mean you can't be accurate with a snubby, because you definitely can. Uh, but when you're coming out to the range, you know, the longer barrel is uh, usually a lot easier to shoot. Let's do a little bit more here, and then I'll put some 357 through it as well. Go out here to 35 yards. See if I can hit out here. Hit a little bit, man. All right. And bring it Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, I pulled that one. I knew it did as soon as I pulled the trigger. And yet I pulled the trigger anyway. All right, I said I was going to use some 357. Here we go, some 357 here. Let's, uh, let's do these red plates one more time here. A little bit more up to it. A little bit more. Well, I, I nicked him, I think. There we go. Let's see where that one went. A little bit of a flinch there. Gotta watch that. Well, let's try the 357 over here at the 35 yards. This is a good shooting gun. It really is. It almost shoots as well as my 686. Well, where'd I go? There we go. Almost as well. Almost, but not quite. The trigger pull on this gun is really good. Uh, it's not all that heavy. It's really smooth. Now these do have a uh, a coil mainspring rather than a, a uh, the other kind of mainspring, the leaf mainspring. Almost couldn't think of it. 
So it's a little bit different pull, but it's still really smooth on this gun. Really nice. There's not really a whole lot of stacking. Now once you hit the wall, just a hair creep, but it's not bad. Uh, the one thing about this though, that's definitely not as good as the Smith or even my Colt Python is the length of the pull. The uh, 686 Plus and the Colt Python have a much shorter stroke to them. Um, and so, you know, that does make a difference, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, you can still shoot this gun pretty accurately. So why don't we go out here to uh, 100 yards and 80 yards out here. I'll try this with the uh, 38 Special. With a 5-inch barrel, I might have enough velocity out here to actually hit fairly well with this gun. Let's see here. See how far up I need to aim. Oh, I heard it. Took it a long time to get there. Yeah. Well, that didn't hit, but I didn't see where it went. There we go. Yeah. Well, I didn't see that one either. I think that was it too, wasn't it? Well, four out of six. I'm gonna say that ain't too bad. I wouldn't mind doing a little better than that. Let's try the 357 Magnum out there at 100. See if maybe I can hit this one. I'm not sure if I have to hold up or not on with 357. I might need to hold down actually. I heard it. Didn't hear that one though. Let me bring her up just a hair. There it went. There it is. Yeah, that was all she wrote. Not too bad. Not too bad. Now I'm gonna try that one at 80. I'm gonna use 350, uh, 38 special first. Try this one at 80 yards. This is actually the harder to hit. It's only at 80 yards, but it's half the size of the one at 100. So, you know, only 20 yards difference, but half the size means it's a lot more challenging. But we'll see what we can do. I thought I saw it swinging, but I didn't hear it hit. I may have hit the chain. I saw that one. Yeah, that went short. Huh. Yeah, let me try one more time here. That went right beside it. That was all of them. Couldn't find the range on that one. Kind of bracketed it. Went a couple to the left, and I moved it over a little to the right, and that one went short. I tried to bring it up, and that one went left again. So, I don't know. Probably just me. Not being as steady as I need to be to hit that plate way out there. Try it with 357. See if maybe I can figure it out with this. Yeah, there it was first time, wasn't it? Yeah, sometimes just that extra velocity just makes it easier to hit with. You're not dealing with that, that bullet, uh, you know, arcing downward. Because at uh, this distance, 357, you know, it's, it's pretty flat shooting. You know, compared to uh, 38 Special, which you're going to get some arc on. And if you get variations in velocity, that arc is going to be different. So you can have one round that goes a little short, one round goes a little long with the same hole because one just had a little bit more velocity than the other one. Go back out here to 100. Yeah. 
Start that one. I go high maybe, bring it back down. That was all she wrote. Not too bad. I'm having a good time. I really am. I love shooting this gun. It's a shame. It's just a, a tragedy and a crime that I'm not getting it out more often. But that's the downside to uh, starting a YouTube channel is that all your shooting seems to be geared toward making videos and testing out new guns and your old guns just kind of sit in the safe and they're lonely waiting on you to come back and see them again. And uh, that's the downside to it. You don't get to shoot uh, just for you anymore. You're shooting for the channel and for the people that are watching, but I enjoy doing it. And I'm not planning on changing anytime soon. Hopefully at some point I'll be able to spend more time just shooting to be shooting and not just making uh, videos, but I don't plan on giving up on the videos anytime soon. Well, assuming, uh, you know, YouTube doesn't cancel my channel. They're doing a lot of that these days, it looks like. So they've made a lot of new rules up and uh, they're enforcing them retroactively for videos that have already been put up. And doesn't seem very fair to me, but they are a private company, I guess, and get to do what they want to do. Well, they're not really private. They're part of Google, which I'm sure is, is a public company, but they're... Well, still struggling on that six inch plate with those 38s. Didn't have a whole lot of trouble with the 357 on it. But I got to hit it. Get it double action too. There we go. Well, I don't know what else to tell you. It is a fine, fine revolver. A nice shooting gun. Ruger did a good job with it. Uh, the finish looks really nice on it. I mean, these guns are, are just really, really beautiful guns. Generally speaking, I don't like Ruger bluing. Just to be perfectly honest, I mean, I, I've got that. Uh, I've got a couple of Blackhawks, a Super Blackhawk and a regular Blackhawk and 357. They're blued and they're okay. Uh, the GP100s in blue, I don't really like. To be honest, I like their stainless generally. But this one's nice. This one looks nice. I really like the way this model in particular looks even with these grips i really like the look of the grips the, the feel is fine i mean like i said i prefer a little bit of checkering or something to give you a little bit more purchase but not the end of the world it's not a defensive handgun for me it's just a range toy that i don't get out near enough but i like it i really do i think ruger did a really good job with this revolver and uh you know if you chose this over a smith and wesson or a colt I wouldn't blame you, really. You know, I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I would probably choose a Smith over this. Uh, I'd probably choose this over the Colt, generally speaking, because of the price. I'm not sure a Colt is worth twice the price of this. Uh, I don't think it's that much better in my personal opinion, but I've still got a Colt <laughs> because it's a Colt and I wanted it, right? And sometimes that's all it amounts to. It's worth more because you want it, but uh, bang for your buck you know ruger gp100 might be the best gun on the market for the money and uh, if you were, you were to make that argument i'd have a hard time disagreeing with you so there she is the ruger gp100 the lipsy special edition there and uh guys before we go check out the description in my video there's a link there for the goa the gun owners of america i think i've got the hat on right now uh you got a discounted membership link there where you can Join up with the GOA and help us in this fight because there's a lot of fight going on right now. The ATF is pulling a lot of shenanigans right now. They're trying to write law. When it's uh, been stated by the Supreme Court, they can't do that. But that's exactly what they're trying to do anyway. Uh, because uh, these groups don't really seem to care, you know, what they're supposed to do. They're going to do whatever their 
able to get away with. And that's it's a sad commentary on the state of our government today. But that's what they're doing and you know the GOA is fighting back. Also the TFA, there's a link for the TFA, the Tennessee Fire Association there. Um, if you live in the great state of Tennessee like I do, then I'm urging you to join up and get involved. Contact your legislators and uh, join the TFA because TFA is uh, at work right now fighting a lot of this as well and, and trying to get some legislation in, in this state uh, passed as well. That'll give us even more freedom than we have now. Try to restore it back to the way it was when the Constitution was first ratified. We're trying to get back to, to 1791 and uh, make it the way it was then freedom-wise because uh, the Constitution guaranteed all these freedoms and then the federal government ever since has been trying to get around that and take them away from us. So if you would uh, check out the description, click on those links, join up. If you live in Tennessee, join the TFA. Guys, I appreciate you coming out. God bless you. Y'all take care of yourselves and we'll see you next time.